Hello, welcome to the encouraging word of today. Today is Tuesday, July the 27th, and we're going to pick up here in the wonderful encouraging word of God. And I pray that you are being encouraged as you are being challenged in this word to think about uh, how uh, we can see God do a great and mighty work among us, how he will send his spirit uh, in to bring us back to uh, restoration and revival, uh, to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, uh, to uh, have no other gods before him, to make no graven images, to do not take the Lord God's name in vain, and to honor the Sabbath and keep it holy. We've neglected those first four of the commandments of God, which is why it doesn't matter what we do with the rest of them, where we violated the first commandment. Uh, we have done what the Church of Ephesus has done as a nation. We have left our first love. We've also done that as churches. But God's heart in allowing uh, devastation and difficulty and hard times to come into a nation's life is to get that nation to turn around and to turn back to him. And we've already seen that in uh, chapter 2 where he says, verse 21, Fear not, O land, and be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. And so he says, if you, if you do come back to me with all of your heart, as he says in uh, verse, two, verse 13, rend your hearts and not your garments. Um, uh, Therefore also now saith the Lord, turn ye even unto me with all of your heart and with fasting and weeping and mourning. For, the God, for God, he is gracious and merciful and slow to anger and great in the kindness. And so he, his desire is to rush into us and to rescue us, to restore us and to renew us. And so as we pick up here, uh, verse 23 this morning, the thing continues to carry on about this issue that if you would repent, if you would come to me and confess your sin and get right and get back to where you're supposed to be, then listen to verse 23. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause uh, to come down for, for you the rain, the former rain, the latter rain, in the first months, and the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will restore you to the years that the locusts have eaten, and the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the pommel worm, my great army which I sent amongst you. And so he says, I sent this amongst you so that I can wake you up, so I can get your attention. We need to repent. And if we would repent, God could restore the years which the locusts have eaten away, which the devil has destroyed. As the Bible says, what the devil means for evil, God means for good. He always wants to restore us and bring us back uh, to his heart so that we know how much he loves us, that when we start to stray away like a stubborn child, he disciplines that child because uh, he knows that, that child is going to, it's just like a regular parent would, when they're doing things that they are not supposed to do. We discipline them because we know it's going to end up harming them. It's going to end up hurting them. It's going to end up corrupting them. And so we discipline them. And this is what God does. And this is what he has been doing with the nation of Israel. And he says, if y'all would repent and turn, I would rush into you. I would restore unto you the years that the locusts have eaten up, that the canker worm and the caterpillar and the pommel worm, my great army which I sent amongst you, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. My people shall never be ashamed if we would just come back to him, if we would just repent. And sadly, um, we are in a tough place in our nation uh, that not only do we not want God, but we don't want his son in whom he sent. And just like in the days of Israel that came along and killed, um, crucified the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, there was a, a quote by Billy Graham I want to read it to you that was just sent to me this morning, and it just so, so goes along with this. It says, Some people have said that man has improved since that day. That's the day that, that, that they crucified Christ. That if Christ came back today, he would not be crucified, but be given a glorious reception. Christ does come to us every day in the form of the Bible that we do not read, in the form of the churches that we do not attend, in the form of the human need that we pass by. 
I am convinced that if Christ came back today, he would be crucified more quickly than he was 2,000 years ago. Sin never improves. Human, never, human nature has not changed. And so just as it was in the days of Israel when Jesus came, they crucified the one who was there to bring them back. <laughs> and certainly now we are there. But this is the promise. This is the promise. What God wants to do. As Jesus was standing at the, at the, uh, on the mountains looking down at Jerusalem and said, Oh, Jerusalem, if you had known the day of your visitation, how I would have gathered you like a hen does her chicks. And sadly, I think we're missing it in America as well. God wants to gather us. He wants to restore us. But we must repent. We must return. We must confess and get right. For if we do, oh man, I will restore you. The years that the locust have eaten. And so I pray today that as you go forth and you carry out your daily task, as you do these things, that you are in a state of repentance uh, personally, but also a state in a state of repentance nationally. We need to cry out for our nation. We need to cry out for our leaders. We need to cry out for one another that God would uh, be placed on the throne of our hearts and that we would exalt him um, and recognize that he is the name that is above every name and that the name of Jesus Christ, every knee is going to bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And, uh, and so I, to the glory of the Father. Uh, and so... It's coming, but I pray that it would, we would um, bring in a time of restoration before he comes that we might see many people be saved, that people might turn from, the, from this world and turn to the God who made it. And so I pray you go forth today mightily in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and I pray that you are encouraged to do what Christ has called you to do.